1025. It's time to talk football. It's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Good evening and welcome to Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Rangers close in on Schalke winger Rabi Matondo. Kyogo's targeting a minimum of 20 goals this season after scoring over the weekend. And Aberdeen, Kilmarnock and Hibs are amongst the teams who got off to a winning start in the League Cup. I'm Andrew McLean. Joining me in the studio tonight is Hugh Keevans. The Rangers fans were concerned, Andrew. They thought the transfer business was moving slowly, but Rangers have had an adrenaline rush now. Antonio Cholak in, Tom Lawrenson, Matondo on the way. And speculation regarding Malik T- Tillman, American international at Bayern Munich. And with regard to Kyogo, he'd been very modest because he got 20 goals in all competitions last season and he was out for three months because of injury. Well, that's what Hugh thinks. What do you think at home? We want to hear from you, whether it's about signings, whether it's about pre-season. Maybe you were at one of the competitive League Cup games over the weekend, the first competitive football of the Scottish season. Maybe you liked what you saw from your team. Maybe you didn't like what you saw. Let's hear from you. 01419511025, or you can send us a tweet at Clyde SSB. And it's good to see you. You made it back from the weekend in one piece, Hugh, because I'm sure you were. You were all three days of transmit having a great time. Well, that was a thing along with uh, Lewis Capaldi last night you know uh, but I decided that Super Scoreboard comes above all else it does indeed and it's the football we want to chat about so if you've got a point to make 0141 951 1025 let's start with that uh, potential Rangers signing because it looks as if they're closing in on the signing of Schalke winger Rabi Matondo now the 21 year old joined Schalke for about £11 million back in 2019 hasn't quite managed to establish himself as a regular there he was loaned out to Circle Bruges in Belgium last season scored 10 goals in 27 games for them looks as if that'll be a fee of around £2 million £2.5 million pounds. and as you say Hugh with Cholak and Lawrence coming through the door in the tail end of last week this one looks as if it's getting close as well. Rangers are, are upping their transfer business now. Yeah, Matondo's story, his backstory is an odd one. As you say, to, to leave Stoke uh, for £11 million to go to the Bundesliga and then Schalke, three years later, are willing to take a drop of £8 million on what they paid for him. But uh, Rangers have obviously liked what they have seen of him uh, and it be an interesting one, but... You have to think back to Ahmed Diallo. You know, let's wait until he gets here. Let's wait until he's had some games under his belt and then assess Matondo because Diallo came with a huge reputation and flopped. Yeah, because ultimately previous price tags mean nothing, but Rangers will have done their scouting. They'll have seen that he had a full season out on loan last year. They'll have liked what they saw, and those attacking positions are what Rangers have been targeting. They did their work in the defence early. They managed to tie Connor Goldson down yep. to a new contract. John Suter came in on a pre-contract, but it's those forward areas now that Rangers are really reinforcing. Yep, and there are only two mysteries left to be solved now. Ryan Kent and Alfredo Morelos. Are they staying? Are they going? If both stay and you have done the transfer business that you have done so far, then the Rangers fans would be, I think, highly optimistic at the start of the season. Yeah, because those are the big ones, because we saw over the weekend that Joe Rebo's future was sealed. He's moved to Southampton in a package that could reach £10 million. It looks as if it's a, an initial fee of £6 million that could then rise to £10 million. A lot of question marks over his future this summer. Rangers will be happy that they've managed to get that one sorted and solved, but they've still got, as you say, Ryan Kent and Alfredo Morelos and what happens with those two players, whether they sign new contracts, whether they leave, whether they're still there and haven't signed new contracts, it is going to be a, a constant distraction behind the scenes because there'll be people working hard to, to try and find a solution there. And to what extent does uh, qualification for the Champions League come into play here? Because if you qualify for the Champions League, you have got tens of millions of pounds and therefore there is no need to accept any bids that may come your way for Kent and or Morelos. Well, let's hear from you at home, 01419511025 on the phones, or you can tweet us as well at Clyde SSB. Just going back to Rabi Matondo, the last couple of signings that Rangers have brought in, Cholak and Lawrence, both 28 year olds. When you look at Rabi Matondo, he, he's more in that area of, you know, a, a young player coming in that Rangers will hope they can not only bring in, but also develop, and he could potentially fit into that player trading model that Celtic and Rangers and, and all other clubs in Scotland like to do. 
If you have a player who in 2019 was valued at £11 million and in 2022 you get him for £2.5 million, then on the face of it, that's good business. What you have to ask yourself is why has he dropped in value from £11 million to £2.5 million in three years? Yeah, I think he has a year left in his deal now, so that, that may be part of it. There was talk from over in Germany that he was on quite a significant wage and that Schalke didn't see him in their plans and were quite happy just to, to get him off the wage bill. So that may contribute to why the, the fee has dropped from £11 million that far. He's also got, uh, being a Welsh international, he's also got a, a World Cup on his mind and I'm quite sure that he would uh, regard the move to Scotland and the level of performance that he'd have to put in at Rangers would be helpful to him. Yeah, you wonder, because that's the second Welsh international that Rangers have signed this summer, Tom Lawrence, and well, if the Rabi Matondo deal goes through, it will be the second Welsh international. You wonder if they were maybe asking questions to Aaron Ramsey over the summer when they were on their international break and asking him maybe if it's the right place to go. Well, many things go into the pursuit of a player and it would not be out with the bounds of possibility that he was consulted, Aaron Ramsey, uh, on what this young man has to offer. But as I say, he'll need to get here put on the jersey and play some football and then we can arrive at a proper assessment of him. Yeah, we've quite often had uh, Derek Ray on before, the well, well-established journalist, commentator yep. who knows his stuff about German football. I saw him tweeting today about Rabi Matondo and uh, there was people that had been asking him their opinion on him just read his tweet out he said he's incredibly fast but when he played for Schalke game awareness and technical side needed work admittedly that was a long time ago now apparently fared better in Belgium Schalke weren't planning with him though so Derek's got a bit more of an insight to us and it sounds as if you know the the attributes are there he, he's got the pace but just needs to develop on on the other side of his game more well it's not an overwhelming endorsement from uh, Derek Ray uh, but we can all make up our own minds you know if Rangers are keen on him, and they certainly appear to be, and they appear to be very close to signing him, then we'll only find out when he plays football. Because I, I go back to Diallo. He came with a fanfare of trumpets. He scored five minutes into his debut against Ross County. But thereafter, he contributed very little. Well, let's hear from you at home. If you've got any thoughts on this or thoughts on anything else, we'd love to hear from you. 0141 951 1025. Rangers, of course, had a friendly over the weekend as well. It didn't quite go to plan. No, no, a bit of a problem with the floodlights. Uh, These things happen. uh, And apparently, behind the scenes, it was fairly shambolic and chaotic. Uh, but, But Rangers get 45 minutes under their belt and they'll hope the next time the best plan is kick off in daylight yeah it's not the ideal situation when it's your first proper pre-season friendly I know they had a game behind closed doors at the training ground and they took on Partick Thistle but this was more of a, a first team squad they had available for this one and I think it probably will be a bit frustrating for Giovanni Van Bronckhorst because you know pre-seasons are, are planned quite intricately mm. now with the, the build up to the competitive stuff and the fact that they didn't manage to get 90 minutes and it means that players that would have got you know an extra 45 minutes haven't got them there would have been players on the bench that would have loved to have got out there and, and got their first taste of action in the summer that are still waiting yeah well you know it happened and Giovanni Van Bronckers has to get over it and uh, move on to the next game 45 minutes you would just have to say that's better than nothing Yeah, I did see there was another story this morning, I think it was in the the Daily Mail, linking Rangers with another player, this time Malik Tillman, who's a Bayern Munich midfielder. He is a USA international as well, actually made seven appearances for Bayern Munich last season, even came off the bench against Barcelona in the Champions League. So, I mean, it's not often we see the likes of, you know, our Scottish clubs doing business with Bayern Munich, but... Uh, certainly the report saying that that's a player Rangers are interested in If you have someone who was in the Champions League with Bayern uh, last season uh, to what extent are Bayern keen to sell him to anyone um, but this is Rangers as I say they, they, they've taken on an adrenaline rush now and uh, they're beginning to shell out the money uh, they've watched Celtic spend money albeit on retaining Carter Vickers and Jota but it was very important that Celtic retained Carter Vickers and Jota and they have put out good money to do so so we're back to the old days of uh, Sir David Murray saying if Celtic put down a fiver I'll put down a tenner 
We've got another fivers and tenors war going on. I suppose the fact that Rangers over the weekend got that fee for Joe Aribo that does help because sure. they know they've they've had money coming in. The talk was that it was at a six million pounds initial fee. Then Rangers know they've got that money coming in, and they'll be hoping because they need to make those moves now with Champions League qualifiers coming up. Well, Rangers uh, always spoke about uh, getting a proper player trading model on the go, and now they've started. As I say, there are just two mysteries to be solved now, Kent and Morelos. Well, let's hear from you at home, 0141951-1025. But before we do that, let's hear a bit from Conor Goldson, who was speaking to Sky Sports over the weekend, just chatting about Rangers' upcoming Champions League qualifiers. Yeah, 100%. Um, obviously, last year, we didn't, didn't go as planned. Um, but this year, I think, especially after the run we had this year in Europe, the Champions League has to now be the next step that we want to take. And... We'll be working as hard as we can now in the pre-season to try and get as fit as we can and match fit as we can to be ready for the qualifiers. You've had the break and even though now you train on the break, you still lose that match sharpness and match fitness. Um, and it depends who you play. Obviously last year we know we played Malmo midway through their season, so it becomes a whole different ball game. But um, no, we've, listen, like you said, we had an amazing run last year and we beat teams that are Champions League opposition. Um, so we should go into it full of confidence. Yeah, those Europa League games, those two-legged ties that they did so well in last season, that will give Rangers confidence that they can make a better effort of the Champions League qualifiers this time round than they did at the start of last season. Well, there's certainly no need for an inferiority complex. They, they were the Europa League final a matter of weeks ago. The draw for the Champions League qualifiers is next Monday. Uh, they've got two rounds to play. The prize at the end of those two rounds could reach into the 30 to 40 million pound bracket so massive matches yeah it's huge and obviously Rangers making those moves now but if they manage to get through to the group stages of the Champions League then that could change the complexion of their summer as well because then that could allow them to spend a good bit more money if they wanted to if they managed to secure that, that extra funds well as the manager knows if you have those considerable extra funds then it percolates down and he gets to spend more money on the targets that he wants to bring to the club. It's as simple as that. It's always quite unpredictable as well, the Champions League qualifiers. Conor Goldson was talking there about coming up against Malmo last season, and they were in the middle of their season, and Conor Goldson maybe felt that that gave Malmo a bit of an edge in that game. You look at the teams that Rangers could potentially play in these qualifiers, not easy ties, the likes of Monaco who have been spending a lot of money so far this season. If you get past that stage of it, there's the likes of PSV who have also been spending a lot of money. So despite the success that Rangers had in those two-legged ties last season, it's still going to be a, a, a tough ask. Yeah, we tend to think in a parochial way, oh, it could mean tens of millions for Rangers. It could mean tens of millions for Monaco and for PSV. Uh, so that's why these matches will have an incredible intensity about them. But Rangers start off with knowing that Ibrox on European nights has become a unique place and it helped take them to the final last season and it will be of immense help to the players and Giovanni van Bronckhurst when they know who their first qualifier is against. Yeah, well, that will take place on Monday. So a week to go until Rangers find out exactly who they will be facing in the next round of the Champions League qualifiers. I think it's it's Monaco. There's Union St. Gilles, who are a, a Belgian side. I think they finished second in the Belgian league last season. It's either Micheland or AEK Larnaca who play each other in the round before and I think Storm Graz are the other side so there is a good bit of variety in there there'll be some teams that Rangers would much rather play than others I think yeah. if you're a professional you want the easiest tie possible theoretically the easiest tie possible uh, and that would probably be Mitchell and or Larnaca well, let's hear a bit more from Conor Goldson speaking to Sky Sports over the weekend this was him explaining his thought process behind signing a new deal I said all along well that I wasn't, it wasn't like I was running my contract down to move. Um, I just needed time to think about it. Um, at the end of the season, I didn't want to rush into anything and make a decision when we had such big football matches. And I went away for a week with my family in the summer, spoke about it with my wife, and it was our decision was made up in a few days that we were going to sign at Rangers. My wife's lived away from home for four years, doesn't really have any help here, so 
it's not just only a football decision. I have to look after my family and my children. Um, so we had to speak about it uh, um, at length and go into discussions. But we made the decision together that she was okay to stay. And um, footballing-wise, I was always happier. But I think a lot of things, as I said on social media, a lot of things got blown out of proportion last year. And there were so many fake things that I never even commented about and never said anything about. But literally none of it was true. That is the sort of human element that people kind of forget about, that supporters forget about footballers. They just think, well, you know, if he enjoys playing for the club and, you know, he's doing well here, why wouldn't he want to sign on? But Connor Goldson explaining that there was a lot more to it. You know, his family have moved up here. His wife doesn't have her own family close by. And, you know, that that can maybe affect, you know, help with the kids and yep. things like that. And Connor Goldson ha- had a lot to consider over the summer. And that's why it maybe took longer than people were hoping for him to sign on. I understand all of the domestic problems. Uh, some people adapt to it well. Uh, for example, Ange Postacoglu, his wife and children have lived in Australia and Japan, and now they're in Glasgow. Uh, so they globe trot with no particular problem. Um, at the end of the day, Conor Goldson is a working man. He has been made a terrific financial offer as a working man by his employers, uh, and Sometimes wives and families have to go where the work is. Yeah, and you you just look at the decision he made, and Rangers fans will be absolutely delighted that he's done so because it did look for you know the the last few months of the season that it could well be the the final chapter of Conor Goldson's time at Rangers. Outstanding player, and is a real asset to Rangers defensively. Rangers look rock solid in the season to come, uh, and it was important that he took that decision to to stay at Ibrooks. We don't know what Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is, is planning to do defensively this season. He's certainly got options there. One of those options is John Souter and you'd think someone like Connor Goldson is, is the perfect person for him to go in next to, just given the experience Connor Goldson has in general, but his, his time at Rangers, you know, having been there for so long, he's played some huge matches for Rangers and if, if John Souter is going in and stepping into that defence, there's probably not anyone he would want Next to him more than Conor Goldson No And they've also got good backup Into the bargain uh, So As I say In that area of the pitch Rangers have no concerns at all Well let's hear from you At home Whether it's Anything to do with Rangers And Rabi Matondo Maybe Celtic fans You got a, a glimpse of Celtic Over the weekend In that 3 all draw With Rapid Vienna Was there anything you liked Was there anything You didn't like And of course Plenty of League Cup matches That took place over the weekend As well Maybe you Went to go and see your team and it was exciting just to be back at the competitive football. We'd love to hear from you. 01419511025. You are the voice of Scottish football. Call 01419511025. Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Hugh Keevans here with me, Andrew McLean, in the second part of tonight's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Whether it's any of today's topics that you want to chat to us about whether it's something else that we haven't touched on yet that you'd like to talk to us about 01419511025 is the number you need or you can send us a tweet at Clyde SSB just uh, looking at Rangers there there were some comments from Giovanni Van Bronckhorst that came out today about Namdi Offabor a player that Rangers bought I think a pre-contract back in February last year and hasn't been able to play or train because of a heart issue Giovanni Van Bronckhorst saying today that you know, his, his future is still unclear, still unable to train. That that must be a really tough time for Namdi Offabor. Well, you have to be sensitive where the player's health is concerned. You know, clearly he's not able to play professional football at the moment and Rangers are doing the right thing by him. Uh, he's still on the payroll. They are monitoring his condition. But if he is medically unable to play football, then... Sympathy goes to the player And Rangers are being as sympathetic as is possible Yeah, because he's a young man And and health comes first In these types of things, Hugh Yeah, absolutely, without doubt 01419511025 Andy is a Rangers fan in Finiston Andy, what's on your mind tonight? Hi, how are you doing guys? Okay Hi Andy Uh, It's good now that Rangers are starting to strengthen the squad You know, uh, because I was saying the producer there That as Hugh was mentioning, uh, Ken and Alfredo but I, I think Bass is another one we need to keep as well I really think that boy's only going to get better he, he will go at one point but I think right now another season under his belt with Rangers 
you know, uh, what a player he's going to turn out to be. Yeah, there had been a lot of talk about Calvin Bassey early on in the summer, just given his performances in some big matches for Rangers, the Europa League final, and the Scottish Cup final as well. It's all gone quite quiet on that front, yeah. but I think a lot of Rangers fans will be happy that it's gone quiet on that front, Hugh. Absolutely, but there are players within a club who become the greatest financial asset that you have and at this moment that's Calvin Bassey if someone came in with an extraordinary offer for him Rangers would not be looking after the club's affairs properly if he didn't consider it because for the sake of conversation if someone came in and offered you £25 million for Calvin Bassey someone that you bought for thousands of pounds not millions of pounds then you would be failing in your duty if you didn't think about selling them because that's an awful lot of money. Andy, what are you making of Rangers' business so far? Of course, Cholak and Lawrence coming in at the tail end of last week. It looks as if Rabi Matondo is going to join in the next couple of days as well. I, I, I mean, I don't know a lot about the players, but I mean, they, they seem like, you know, they're obviously they're good players that Rangers are going to sign, but that, what was the other boys are talking about the Oh, Gainer, I thought about is it six million they want for that boy or something? I heard something. The talk is it looks point. as if he's going to Mainz Rangers. Certainly, have been credited with an interest in him. It seems to have impressed uh, for Angers in the French league, but it looks as if he's off to Germany. All right, that's not well because I'm saying six million is a bit seems an awful lot of money, you know. Because I, mean, I think myself, if the reports are right about Rebo, I mean six million to me, I know the add-ons, but to me that's still a bit cheap. Yeah, Hugh, you look at the absence of Aribo, him leaving, Rangers have obviously brought in Tom Lawrence, who can play in that attacking midfield area. Ravi Matondo looks as if he can you know, play across the front three. Do you think Rangers still need to bring in someone else on top of that with the departure of Aribo, or do you think they've already planned for him leaving and we're seeing that with the players that have been brought in so far? Yeah, I don't think there'll be any to replace Aribo. I think Rangers have cornered the market in... Bargain basement signing If I can put it that way You know Bassi came for thousands Will go for millions one day Aribo came for thousands Will go for millions one day uh, they, they do their business very well Lundstrom came in From Sheffield United Free transfer Now it's Tom Lawrence From uh, Derby uh, So You know the, It's good business But at the other end of the scale As I say If someone offers you Astonishing money for a player You have to take it Was there another point You wanted to make Andy? No, I just uh, just know, I said it last week. I was going to maybe two weeks ago about the cover and to Mark Wilson about the cover for James Tavenier, and and Mark he, he probably did make a good point saying that like, listen, it's hard for a player to come in and you no know, sit there and watch, but because Tavenier, but if he does get injured, I don't think we'll get a great cover for him. With with respect to Rangers and Celtic fans at this time of the year, they do. Speak about we need this, we need that. Uh, Rangers and Celtic would need a squad of fifty players each to satisfy fans. You know that the, there are young men at Ibrox who are also knocking on the door for a place. Giovanni van Bronckhurst is well aware of who they are, where they play. Yeah, Rangers also signed Maciek Zakowski as well yeah. in January, the young Polish right back who I think had some injury issues in the second half of the season, so maybe didn't feature. As much as he could have I think he certainly played a way to Was it Annan in the Scottish Cup? I remember But potentially if, if he gets a good pre-season under his belt Hugh, He could be the, the player that's in there As the backup to James Tavernier yeah. As I say Fans always think Just one more We need just one more But you'll end up with a score of 50 Well thank you to Andy 01419511025 If you want to get in touch Maybe you've got some thoughts on Celtic Because they continued their pre-season With a 3 all draw against Rapid Vienna In Austria on Saturday Matt O'Reilly, David Turnbull and Kyogo Bagging the goals And as I said at the top of the show Kyogo coming out afterwards and saying that He now wants to get a minimum of 20 goals this season He scored 20 last season And that was with 3 months out John Hartson always used to say If Celtic have a striker who doesn't get 20 goals a season given the commitment to attacking football then the striker's not doing his job properly so Kyogo we know is certainly doing his job properly he was very unfortunate last season three months out because of injury but still got his 20 goals in all competitions Giacomakis came in and filled the void perfectly when Kyogo fell out of the side because of injury 
so Kyogo is more than capable of 20 league goals next season given that he is unaffected by injury it's quite good seeing a player actually just coming out and and saying stuff like that because quite a lot of the time when players get asked that question, you hear them saying, "Oh no, I don't, I don't set targets for yeah. myself. I don't like doing that, or I like to keep that kind of thing to myself." But he clearly feels, you know what, that is a number that I'm more than capable of hitting if I'm more than happy to go out there and and say it publicly. Yeah, of course, why not? Uh, the way Celtic play football, the way Kyogo finishes off chances, he, he he will get twenty league goals if he stays healthy, and. Uh, you know, players who say, "Oh, I never set myself targets." I like managers who say, "I never read the papers." But that's it. Yeah, and it certainly didn't take him too long to get up and running again after his injury. I think no. he got four goals in seven games once he got back from that injury. So he'll be quite confident that he can hit the ground running again. Everyone uh, is coming in to the new season in a different frame of mind at Celtic because Kyogo uh, flew into Scotland and. On the same day that he flew in, he was on the bench at Tynecastle when Celtic kicked off their league campaign a year ago. Uh, so they're all in a better place. They've won the title. They've had a proper summer to relax. They're now enjoying a proper pre-season. They don't have the worry of Champions League qualifiers. So we always get back to it. So long as they avoid injury, there's no reason why Giacomacus and Kyogo should not have a good season. Well, if you've got any thoughts on this or anything else, 0141 951 1025 is the number. Celtic did manage to complete their friendly, unlike Rangers, managed to get the 90 minutes in the tank. I think they used 21 players yeah. in total as well. So it's a good fitness exercise for Celtic. And they couldn't play the recognised defence uh, or what passes for the recognised defence until we know if Celtic will do any other business in that regard. I think they could do with uh, another defender because... Christopher Julian is there, he's playing, but that's because others were unavailable. We don't know if Christopher Julian is staying or not, and Celtic are light in that central defensive position. Yeah, it's all gone quite quiet on the transfer front for Celtic over the last week or so, but that's because they got their business done early, and, and that's not a bad thing at all. Ange Postacoglu, we're thinking. I think they got some of their business done early. Ange Postacoglu knows that he has not got everyone that he wants into the ground. So we are only uh, 11th of July, season's 20 days away yet for Celtic. Uh, and I am certain that other players will come in between now and the first game against Aberdeen. Part of that process of moving players or getting players in is moving players out as well. Celtic do have quite a big squad. They've managed to... Uh, get a few players out the door one of those happened over the weekend this Mila Soro who has gone on loan to I think it's FC Aruca in Portugal it just never really worked out for Ismail Soro at Celtic no no uh, he came in looked apart initially but there are too many too many flaws there too indisciplined uh, that was one of the main flaws but <laughs> Celtic still have the main failures to deal with a Yeti who apparently is over there uh, with them was in Austria and now they're going to play Banik Ostrava but showing nothing according to the reports that I have read uh, the goalkeeper Barkas has gone to Utrecht uh, taken off at half time in his first game um, and Bolingoli does anyone know where Bolingoli is so that was um, 13 million pounds worth of failures that Celtic now have to try and get rid of somewhere. Yeah, loan deals look to be the way that Celtic are doing it at the moment. It's happened with Ismail Asoro, it's happened with Vasilis Barkas, it was almost Christopher Julian going out on loan to Schalke as well. And I suppose when you spend that much money on a player, the likes of, you know, seven million on Julian, five million on Barkas, five million on Ayeti, if they're then not playing and they're out the squad and you're looking to recoup some of the money their value's gone so low at that oh, point yeah. that you, you're hoping that loaning them out can get them to a point where they're playing regular football, they're getting back to the form that is why Celtic bought them and then their, their value goes back up. All you can do is give them to a club and hope that the club sees something in them. Uh, I mean, Utrecht made Barkas sound like the best goalkeeper <laughs> in the world when they signed them, uh, but subbed in his first game. Uh, you have to give them out on loan See if anyone takes the bait and that's the position that Celtic are in. 
Yeah, there was another start for Alexandro Bernabe at the weekend. Celtic's second friendly and his second start. And you think it's you know it'll be a big, big sort of culture shock for him mm. as a, a, a young man coming from Argentina to a Scottish club. And it's probably very valuable for him that he's getting as many minutes as possible in this pre-season. Yeah, by all accounts, uh, he found the second game harder than the first one for Celtic. But pre-season is about gaining fitness. In Bernabe's case, it's about getting to know his teammates he's young he's from another continent I ass- he doesn't speak English uh, it must be a slightly terrifying prospect for him uh, but he will just be given time and the support of everyone and uh, he'll develop he must be the most intriguing signing for Celtic fans because there's you know there's obviously familiarity when it comes to Jota and Carter Vickers we've seen plenty of Ben Segrist over his time in Scottish football whereas Bernabe has come in as a complete unknown quantity really Yeah and uh, as I said about uh, Matondo You're going to have to wait until we actually see them in action I mean if uh, if Bernabe plays against Aberdeen On the 31st of July Then we can start to assess them properly Well let's hear from you 01419511025 Let's hear a bit though from Joe Hart At the moment speaking to Sky Sports over the weekend He's been reflecting on his first season at the club um, important season last season, a lot of fun. But as the managers pointed out, out to us, and as we're well aware of, that was that was last season. Now um, all to play for. We start on zero, and we and we go again. You live in the moment. You play your best football you possibly can every training session. See where you, see where that takes you. And uh, with the team and the, with the way we gelled and the way we worked under this manager, we it took us to some good places. I'm in a different part of my life, sharing um, sharing the trophy with my nearest and dearest felt really special this time whereas before I was probably in a mode where it was all about me um, but you know we, you grow up don't you you grow up I'm definitely I've definitely grown up since those days and they were just as special and they were celebrated a little bit differently but um, yeah it was a nice feeling yeah, I think that was him comparing his title wins at Man City oh. to the title win last season it sounds like it was a, a bit of a quieter celebration for him this summer well he came into Celtic brought profile uh, and was a real attraction for the Celtic supporters. Uh, now, as Joe himself has said, you're back to zero and you have to start again. Uh, and he's got competition because I think uh, Benjamin Segrist is a good goalkeeper. And, you know, Ange Postacoglu is obliged to pick the best goalkeeper at any given time. The start of that interview sounded like a bit of an insight into the mentality that Ange Postacoglu is trying to instill into his players this summer ahead of the new season you know Joe Hart as you say saying you know we we start at zero now and you'd expect that will be the mindset of these Celtic players whatever happened last season now needs to be completely parked and getting ready for a new challenge ahead the thing is they start the season as the title holders they have a title to defend last season at this time it was bedlam and no one expected anything of Celtic. That's why what Ange Postacoglu achieved was borderline miraculous. But they start the season as the defending champions against an Aberdeen side much changed and bringing in players who look as if they'll make them a better team than last season. So from day one at Celtic Park, the heat is on. Yeah, well, Aberdeen, one of many sides who kicked off their competitive action over the weekend in the League Cup group stages. We'll take a look at those results after the break. Anything else you want to chat about, give us a call 0141 951 1025. 0141 951 1025. This is Scottish football's league leader, Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Hugh Keevans here with me, Andrew McLean, in the final part of tonight's Clyde One Super Scoreboard. Let's hear from you 0141 951 1025, or you can tweet us at Clyde SSB. And it was a good weekend, Hugh, because we just had that feeling of the scores rolling in again on a Saturday yeah. afternoon. Well, when I saw the half time score at Easter Road, Hibs 5, Clyde Nil, I thought, oh, wow. This could be double figures And it finished Hibs 5 Clyde nil. But A hat-trick for Christian Doidge uh, I also noted yesterday A couple of goals For Christian Ramirez uh, For Aberdeen Against Peter Head Ramirez Will be part of a Much changed Aberdeen team uh, For the new season Under Jim Goodwin Who's now Stamped his authority uh, On the club The one That, that intrigued me most If you're a St Mirren fan and you go down at home to a part-time team, Arbroath, 
Not the most promising of starts Yeah, as good as our both were last season And so close to getting promotion to the Premiership As you say, it is still a championship team It yeah. is still a part-time team When you know, you've know you got your new signings in there I think maybe four, five new signings it was That started for St Mirren It's really not the ideal start for them whatsoever No, no I mean, psychologically You don't want that uh, supporters like a sign of encouragement Not an immediate sign of worry uh, But Stephen Robinson has time And he will want that result to be rectified I see tonight that Alex Grieve The St Mirren striker has just signed a new two year contract with them The New Zealand international So that will be some good news for them But Stephen Robinson will really be looking to put his stamp on St Mirren this yeah, season he had, he had a poor start uh, as manager not a lot going on, but they eventually got themselves away from the relegation trouble. Uh, but they have to put their foot down now because, as I say, psychologically, that's a poor start. You talk about Christian Dodge bagging a hat-trick. Christian Ramirez got two himself. There was, I think, Simon Murray got a hat-trick for yeah. Queen's, Queen's Park. Park as well. So that's that's exactly what you're looking for. As a striker, on the opening day of the competitive season, Getting a hat trick. There's there's no better way to start, is there? He's had a funny old career, Simon Murray. You know, he's been in South Africa. Uh, he's been in the Premiership. Now he's in the Championship. Uh, but uh, I look forward to seeing Queens Park's progress in the Championship under Owen Coyle. Could be very lively. Yeah, strange that they are will be playing their home games at Oakleview at the start of this season. Lesser Hamden still not ready. That does seem to be taking a long, long time. Of course, they had the sale of Hamden to the Scottish FA, but I mean, it's, it's not the handiest, is it? Oakleview? No, 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 not at all. Uh, and when you're nomadic like that, then you can't grow the club in the way that people want to grow Queen's Park. There's money in there. Uh, they've got Owen Coyle, first class manager. They've got. Leanne Dempster there They've got a director of football from Holland in there uh, Get to Lesser Hamden And start to grow the club on and off the park Two clubs that will be delighted to get off the winning starts You touched on Hibs, Aberdeen as well Didn't have the seasons at all that they would have wanted to last season Hibs have a new manager Aberdeen have Jim Goodwin Who's going through his you know first full transfer window And bringing in his own players It's important for them to you know build on that momentum I like uh, Lee Johnson I like listen to him speak you know, Live Wire the new Hibs manager uh, he's made signings there are more in the pipeline um, we'll see how they go against uh, Falkirk tomorrow night in their second match um, but I think all round lots of things happening everywhere you know Jack Ross at Dundee United bringing in Stephen Fletcher uh, Dylan Levitt on a full time Transfer from Manchester United The new season We're still three weeks off But the new season to me Looks very intriguing I was with producer Callum When the news of Dylan Levitt's Permanent signing at Dundee United Went through And I have never seen a happier person In my life yes. He was ecstatic Yep I haven't seen him so happy Since the last time Dundee United beat Dundee in a derby uh, So they'll be part of the big picture you know, when we have our annual game, when we pick who will be first to twelfth, uh, and all get it spectacularly wrong, but it will be very interesting this time because there's lots of things going on at just about every club. Yeah, I've always learned not to read too much into these uh, League Cup group stages as well because I've no. definitely made predictions based off of these group stages that have not gone well whatsoever. When you look at the bottom six on the last day of last season. And find Aberdeen and Hibs in there That shows you just how problematic the prediction business is Well let's go back to the phone Sam is a Celtic fan in Rutherglen Sam what's on your mind tonight? Uh, it's, uh, no it's uh, just about Joe Hart uh, I think he's been absolutely a brilliant signing for Celtic uh, Yeah Hugh that was a, it was a position that Celtic really really needed to sort yeah. Last summer they had all sorts of problems The season before Barkas was in and out Connor Hazard had a shot in goal Scott Bain was there but couldn't keep his place either And Ange Postacoglu when he came into Celtic Knew he had to address that And he's brought in someone that's done the job Well Barkas uh, proved that If you have a bad goalkeeper Then bad things happen uh, Joe Hart came in as a profile First class Manchester City Caps for England 
And just asserted himself straight away And now they've done the right thing Celtic By getting back up in as well In the form of Benji Segrist So I have no doubt that Joe Hart Will start as the number one man But it's handy to know you've got quality behind him Sam with Joe Hart And the signings that Celtic have made this summer How confident are you feeling heading into the new season? Oh I'm very very confident I'm, I'm over the moon To be honest Yeah I can't wait for the season to start. Everybody's oh. over the moon on the 11th of July. It's the 31st of July that becomes the problem. I, I know. It's, it's the next day. Eh? Yeah, exactly, Sam. It goes up and down. Uh, but I do think it's a very interesting opening fixture for Celtic. I can imagine Celtic Park on the 31st of July. Absolutely full. Um, the supporters welcoming back Ange Postacoglu and the players who won the title. But it's a fantastic match to start with. You know, Aberdeen, uh, who really needed to go away and regroup, and they have done it, and plenty of signings. They were a shambles last season, an ocean-going shambles. But now Jim Goodwin hopes that he's steadied the ship with the signings that he has made, and I think it's a first-class match for Celtic to have. Yeah, and for Celtic fans like Sam, it's a complete contrast in how they would have been feeling at this time last summer because of so much uncertainty, a manager they hadn't really heard of, players coming in that they hadn't heard of. They've now got a settled squad. They've got the signings they wanted in Jota and Cameron Carter-Vickers. They'll be feeling much, much better about things. What Ange Postecoglou did was illogical. He won the title, but it was illogical because what he inherited... Uh, was a shambles uh, Fans weren't all that sure Who he was in the first place uh, And After six games They'd lost three of them But Thereafter The next 32 games No losses Now Sam's on the line Saying he's over the moon Can't wait for the season to start So Now He's done the illogical bit Ange Postacoglu Can he do the logical bit and defend his title Well thank you to Sam Did you know this Hugh By the way Scottish football is now Officially fashionable Because Josh mm. Doig Is Looks as if he's off to Italy yeah. Looks as if Lewis Ferguson Is off to Italy As well It looks as if the Serie A clubs Are Really enjoying the Scottish market now It looks as if it'll be A, th- a fee of around £3 million each For both of those players Going to Or Leaving Hibs and, and leaving Aberdeen But It's showing that You know there are you know, big leagues out there that are taking notice of the young talent in Scotland. Well, great for them. Congratulations to both of them. But as they say, arrivederci to Scotland. We say ciao to all manner of nationalities. We truly will be a multicultural league next season from South Asia to North Macedonia. They have come in to Scottish clubs. So cosmopolitan, that's us. You wonder how much the Aaron Hickey move has influenced all this because it is Bologna that are in for Lewis Ferguson. Hellas Verona will have seen what Aaron Hickey did over there yep. and they'll feel that that's a, a very good example that players, young players are able to go over there and cut it if they're given the chance and if they get the right player. Well, I think they've been given a life-changing opportunity. I'm not talking about money here. I'm talking about the chance to play in Serie A observe a different culture look at the Japanese players who come into Celtic and the way that they've adapted to a different culture they, they have gone from one continent to another at least uh, Lewis Ferguson and Doig belong to the same continent as the Italian clubs that they are joining so they've got a real big chance in life here and if it's a stepping stone to the English Premiership then okay but also you can go, look at Liam Henderson in Italy. The clubs he's been with, the career he's made for himself there. That's how to do it. Go, learn, absorb the different culture and grow. Yeah, I think Jim Goodwin was describing Lewis Ferguson's move to Bologna as a brave one. And we do like to see our young Scottish players going out into the, the big leagues and getting their opportunities. So once those moves go through, good luck to Josh Doig and to Lewis Ferguson. But that's all we've got for uh, time for tonight. Thank you for your calls. Thank you for your tweets. Thank you to Hugh Keevans in the studio as well. I'll be back tomorrow night with Mark Wilson. Of course, loads of League Cup games on the go tomorrow night. And after this, it's Callum Gallagher.